when the augmentation funding came through. And as the Cygnus chief engineer, I was somewhat disappointed that none of that funding came towards me. But on the other hand, it was it was critically important for us as a as a company at that point in time to to gain some confidence in, in the Antares launch vehicle. And we did we did get that from that augmentation funding. And so let's benefit from hindsight by th thinking about the things that happened when Cygnus flew in the first mission and then thinking about well, what augmentation would you have crafted and funded to address that risk that actually materialized in the program. I thought of three things that occurred in fairly rapid succession with the Cygnus um, first rendezvous, and they were all software-based phenomena, um, which tells me that augmentation funding that had gone towards deeper testing of software, um, more precise, more flight-like, high-fidelity test platforms, more that can go in parallel so you can do more testing, and you know, better, better, richer simulations. All of those things, uh, and I'll add another one there, uh, 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 testing that was devised to push the avionics and software beyond its nominal performance sequence, I guess, is the, is the way I would describe it. So all of those things combined could have gone in an augmentation context towards identifying the very things that gave us trouble on the, on the COTS first program. Let me, let me just dive down in a little more detail on the th three particular items that gave us trouble. In the first instance, on the day of rendezvous, when we did not actually succeed and approach the ISS, we ran into a single line of code that was wrong based on a misunderstanding of the interface characteristics of a device on the space station. And early on in the program, years prior to that moment in time when, when, when our software didn't work because of that misunderstanding of the interface, we knew that in our test and simulation environment, as well as in the NASA SDIL test environment, nobody had that actual device a flight equivalent unit or engineering unit of that device that was resonant on the space station, nobody had that in their test configuration. We, we compromised. We used a similar device, and that similar device did not have the exact same characteristics. And using that similar device was, in effect, a cost savings compromise. We all could have gone and spent a lot of money to go get a, an exact equivalent to that unit that was on the space station, but it was actually a third party's unit and neither Orbital ATK nor NASA JSC really saw the need to go invest in that, that particular uh, aspect of the test environment. But if we had done that, if we had had augmentation funding, we might have been able to identify that bug. There were two other test bugs that happened after we went onto the racetrack after missing rendezvous on that first day. Um, one was a software bug that was only exposed by long duration operation of Cygnus. It needs to be long duration continuous operation while being operated in a flight-like manner. We actually, needed to, we actually needed to go through the sequence of commands and, and um, operations on Cygnus to expose this bug. Now we did conduct long duration testing on the ground before we flew, but you could make a case that we didn't do enough. And if we'd had more time, or more high fidelity test platforms that we could have set up offline from the, from the main line of qualification, we may have been able to expose that bug before we flew. And then there was a third bug. The third bug was actually precipitated by the second bug. The second bug put our, our avionics processors under what I'll call stress. And that stress on the processor caused the processor's operating system, its real-time operating system, to behave in a way that we had never seen before, and it was not clear in the literature that this was possible. So this third instance with augmentation funding, we may have been able to craft a test program that would stress the Cygnus avionics and software beyond what I'll call typical operation. And we never really did that on, on, the, on the COTS uh, test program before we flew. And even today, I would say we don't do a whole lot of what I'll call stress testing of the, of the basic software. We do in the, in the GNNC and Monte Carlo world, but not in the basic software world.